It is officially new in Boxtober here on Vintage Geek, and I'm very excited today because we are going to unbox the legend. As part of new in Boxtober, we've been unboxing original systems all month here on Vintage Geek. If this is your first time watching, I do encourage you to like and subscribe. It's going to help us a lot as we grow the channel here. Today, we've got a very special addition to the collection. It's a Packard Bell Legend 4, or perhaps Legend IV. I'm not sure what they went with here. This is another boxed original that we have not yet gotten into to see what's inside. Now, last week we talked about the Commodore and we've got out the Amiga 500 and we found out that it wasn't necessarily a new in box original. I'm hoping that will be the case with this one, but we're gonna find out. Packard Bell has an interesting history for me. Now, there's not a ton available online for this particular model. I was familiar with Packard Bell growing up because in the mid 90s, about the time that Windows 95 came into prominence, a number of my friends had Packard Bell machines that they had gotten through their families or otherwise because they were fairly cheap units to acquire. And it was kind of a running joke with myself and my friends that Packard Bell was very much junk. It <laughs> didn't hold up well, the drivers never seemed to work right. Again, this was later in Packard Bell's history. This particular machine we have here today is an early one. It's a 286 model, and I'm very much not familiar with it, so I'm curious to learn more about it as we unbox it here on Vintage Geek. Before we even get into opening the box on this unit, I just wanted to mention a couple of things that I noticed about the box itself. One is the tagline, which says, America grew up listening to us, it still does. Now, I'm sure that's referencing the fact that Packard Bell started out in the 30s as a company that primarily made radios. I think it's probably a little bit of a bold claim that America America grew up listening to us and it still does but you know what I'm sure it worked for them just fine they list a few things on the box itself that I thought were worth noting as well it does say that this is an 8286 processor it has a high capacity hard disk drive not sure what that means specifically but I'm sure we're gonna find out it's got a memory expansion up to 4 megs it's got VGA graphics adapter it says that it comes with a VHS video setup tape which I'm very anxious to find out if it's still in the box because I'm gonna have to check that out for sure and it comes with a one-year limited warranty which I'm gonna go ahead and say is long since expired but uh, it's got an integrated software package curious to see what that contains it comes with uh, GW basic and MS-DOS 4.01 let's get into this Packard Bell legend 4 we've got the Packard Bell keyboard here. It certainly looks nice and original. I'm assuming that the machine has a modem because it came with a phone cord. Original Packard Bell mouse. Cord's still uh, all tied up there, so that looks great. And it looks like we've got some documentation here. Lotus Works. I'm assuming this came with the software package that was included. Quick reference for that. Another Lotus Works reference. PFS First Graphics, because who doesn't want to make cool charts? I mean, it's what I would do first with a computer, I'm sure. This is a real gem right here. We've got a package of Prodigy and a, a free month subscription, so that's great. We'll have to uh, try that out, see if we can get online with this machine. I'm sure it's going to work really well. MS-DOS and GW Basic manuals. Looks like this thing came with quite a bit of documentation. And we have all of the actual Packard Bell manuals that look like they're all in this plastic bag. It even has a part number on it, part number LW1, whatever that means. We've got a 286 user's manual, quick start guide. In case the video is not good enough, you can have it in paper form, apparently. Manual for the color monitor, which we actually don't have, so I'm assuming that was a separate box. Multi-mode video card. User's guide for the mouse, which is surprisingly long. Can't imagine there's that much to it, but hey, you know what? They're thorough, I like that. Manual for the 2400 baud modem. And we've got some warranty documentation and a note to customer congratulating me on purchasing this new Packard Bell Legend 4. The hard disk has been low level, high level formatted and one partition has been created. It says it's ready to run when you hit power on. Oh, and it does have a quality control date on it, November 20th of 1990. And the rest of this looks to be original sales documentation. Total charge for it was $1,154.99. Pretty pricey machine. Ah, yes. And we have the Packard Bell setup video on VHS. I'm hoping we'll still play. It looks like a very short video, but uh, I'm anxious to check that out. We also have in the box here a set of discs. We've got the MS-DOS and probably other packaged utilities and programs that we just found the manuals for. And last but not least, 
we have keys and screws. Now the keys, I'm assuming, are for some kind of hard drive lock functionality, but the extra screws are interesting to me. I'm not sure if they're implying that uh, in getting into this machine, if you're going to lose some <laughs> inherently, or what the situation is there, but uh, I like the fact that they're included. That covers the first layer of kind of the styrofoam packing, so now we can take this out and get to the computer itself. I see we've got a power cord hanging out in here. It has not been opened from what I can tell. And then we've got the computer itself. Let me just go ahead and get the plastic off of this. I want to say first and foremost that of all the machines we've unboxed, this one may be the cleanest and the most impressive to look at. The overall condition of this is really immaculate. I can't guarantee that it's never been out of the bag, but it certainly looks like it hasn't been. The front panel it's pretty basic. This is a kind of standard IBM compatible design. You've got both types of floppy drive. You've got the five and a quarter, the three and a half. Five and a quarter still has the cardboard insert in it. I don't know if they would have put one in the three and a half inch drive, but I'm assuming not. It's got the Legend 4 logo on the front of it. It's kind of got these notches in it that match the lettering, but not quite. It's got this uh, lock function here, so you could lock out the system. I assume that disables the hard drive or something. And we did get the keys as we found earlier for that. A hard disk indicator, a turbo light. It's got a reset button. And then we've got the power switch over here on the right. Taking a look quickly at the back side of this unit. And this is where, for me, it gets even more impressive just because of the shine of the connectors and the metal plates in the ISO slots. It just seems like this machine has never been touched. The power supply, it's got a really nice shine to it. And we've got this manufacturer seal on the cover that has not been disturbed. I think I'm going to leave it that way. Normally I open these machines up so that we can look at them together on the video, but I really don't want to break that seal yet. Something about it <laughs> just seems like it, uh, it's the right thing to do. On the back, we've got keyboard and mouse ports. Those are the PS2 style ports, two DB9 serial ports, 25 pin parallel port. This is the multi-mode video adapter that was mentioned on the box. Now it looks like it's actually got a connector for both the CGA type of monitor, as well as a VGA or EGA type, which is pretty cool. We've got a modem built in. That's what that phone cable was for, a 2400 baud modem, perfect for connecting to an online service like Prodigy, which they also included in the packaging. Other than that, it's, it's pretty standard. You've got all your info on the back with the serial number plate and the original manufacturer data. Overall, very impressed with the quality and the condition of this particular unit. I thought about going through all the paperwork and reading the setup instructions, but I thought they gave you a VHS tape that tells you how to set it up, so why not refer to that instead? There's a lot of tradition in these boxes, a tradition of technological excellence that spans more than 50 years. It began at a time when America relied on Packard Bell radios for information and entertainment. I knew there was gonna be a tie-in to radio somewhere in this video. Packard Bell computer systems like yours are at work in industry, government, and in homes across the nation. Linking the system together is easy. Once you know what each component is. Do tell me more. I'd like to know how these components go together. I think that's the whole point. Plug the keyboard into the keyboard port. Next, plug your monitor cable in here. If you have a monochrome, CGA, or EGA monitor, you will use the 9-pin connector. The power cord for the monitor can plug into any standard wall outlet. Really covering all the bases in this video. It is recommended, however, that you use a power strip with a built-in surge protector. Glad they went over that. As your system warms up, it checks to see if all of the components are working correctly. If your computer indicates a hard disk boot failure, it means that your hard drive has lost its format. Is it just me or does it seem a little bit strange that the first thing they mention in the video is if your hard disk fails? <laughs> This was supposed to be a brand new system, so I'm guessing that wasn't uh, spelling a very good result for initial out-of-the-box failure rate. First, use the cursor keys to highlight the DOS utilities, then press the Enter key. Now, cursor down to the Format option and press the Enter key. As exciting as this video is, uh, I think I've got the basics down. I've learned where to plug in the keyboard, mouse, and monitor. I'm gonna do it for that video. I followed the highly technical instructions given in the video setup manual for this Packard Bell Legend 4, and I think I've got everything ready to go for our initial test here. Now I am just using a standard Dell flat panel monitor. I didn't want to go crazy and try to use a vintage piece here because we know this monitor works and we know it has a VGA output at least. Looks like we do have the cardboard insert still in the drive, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and set that aside. I also did want to mention here that the keyboard is in very good condition as one would expect for something new, but I did notice and kind of using the keys on this that 
it feels a little cheap. It definitely doesn't have the same feel as the Commodore keyboard or and certainly the IBM keyboards with the clickiness. It just feels kind of empty, if I'm honest. You've also got this Packard Bell ball mouse here in new condition. That's kind of cool. It's got the different tone for the two buttons compared to the rest of the mouse shell, which is kind of neat. It feels quite a bit better than the keyboard itself. But again, it, it feels a little bit cheap. And this was kind of a budget computer from what I understand compared to its IBM brethren. Because we did not take this cover off, we haven't checked anything inside. I don't know if there's a battery inside that could have leaked. I don't know if there's any capacitors that may blow like we saw happen with the core data. So this is very much a mystery, but I want to get right into it and just see what happens. All right, well, now we got invalid configuration information, which makes sense because the battery, if there is a battery, would be dead. Take a look at the setup utility here. So it's telling me that errors were found during the power on self test, which totally makes sense because the battery is assuredly dead, hopefully not leaking all over the board. It says clock chip lost power, CMOS checksum invalid and incorrect configuration data in CMOS. The video output on this system seems to be working fine in VGA mode, but because of our capture device, it looks like we're actually losing part of the screen on the sides. We've seen this happen before with some captures, but just a heads up for those watching, you may be missing some text on the left-hand side of the screen. This is the uh, Phoenix Technology System Configuration Setup. It thinks that it's January 1st, 1989. It doesn't look like it's recognized drive B, which should be the three and a half inch. So let me just go ahead and see if it will let me uh, change that. Yep, sure will. Display is showing a CGA 80 column, which technically we're in VGA mode. I'm not sure what else it gives us here. You can do monochrome, VGA, EGA, or CGA 40 or CGA 80. So let's see if we can save and exit on this. Yeah, no boot device available. It doesn't look like the hard drive is either detecting or actually functioning. According to the box, it uses a 40 meg hard disk drive. So I'm gonna try to find the option for that here in the menu. 42, there's a 40. Let's try this. It probably won't work. I don't think the hard drive is actually spun up, if I'm honest. Yeah. We happen to have the floppy disks that came with this, so we should be able to use one of these to get us booted up. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the MS-DOS diagnostic disk. It did suggest that even in the video in case there's a hard disk failure. We should be able to try to boot this if I just hit F1. Well, we've got all sorts of different uh, tests we can run here with this diagnostic, so that's pretty cool. Well, we know the floppy disk is working because I just loaded the diagnostics program. How about the hard drive card test? Let's try H. We'll do the basic test. Well, that's not a great sign. All right, so we've got to fail on the hard disk drive C. I don't think it's going to let us format the hard disk, but I can try. It's not even going to let me do that. Just for good measure, I'm going to physically power down the machine and power it back up again because I feel like this hard disk is trying to work. Well, let's see if we can initialize the drive. That passed. Wow, you can really get in depth with this thing. It really gets angry when it decides that it's not working. Let's just do a scan disk for bad tracks. How about that? The disk has not been implemented or hard formatted. All right, so I'm of the conclusion here that the hard drive is probably gonna need to be removed, probably gonna need to do a little bit of maintenance on the head itself. Perhaps try that trick where you put a little bit of oil in the head. I'm not gonna do that today, but it does seem like it's a good candidate to be at least a working drive if we did a little bit of maintenance on it. It is trying to access, it's responding to the actual maintenance program, so it's a good sign overall. Since the included discs for DOS were actually a full installation designed to really be installed on the hard drive of the system and because we don't have a working hard drive yet in the Packard Bell Legend. I'm going to go ahead and jump the gun a little bit and just boot up with an older version of DOS that just has a single boot disk. It's giving us the date. I'm not going to change it and the time. Again, just going to leave that alone. And we have successfully booted into a DOS prompt on this Packard Bell Legend. So we've got a working machine here. We could certainly run some floppy based software, I'm sure. But uh, I'm actually kind of anxious to get into this one. I hate to break the seal, but uh, if I can get into that hard drive at some point and try to uh, get some lubrication on the head or something to see if it might come back to life, it'd be fun to uh, get this computer working to its original specifications. And I think we could probably do it. It's certainly in clean enough condition. So I'm gonna make that uh, one of my goals in the future. I'm also very glad that uh, we didn't have any capacitors blow or any other casualties in firing this up for the first time. Overall, this Packard Bell Legend 4 is in great condition. It's one of the cleanest originals that I've seen in our unboxing video so far, and it was really a pleasure to be able to open this here on the video today. If you like what we're doing here on Vintage Geek, if you like vintage computers, please like and subscribe. It's gonna help us as we grow here on the channel. Also wanna remind you, if you like uh, the shirt that I'm wearing or any of the shirts we've had on the videos, you can find those on the merch store. Check out the link in the description for all sorts of cool merchandise. You can get shirts and coffee mugs and a whole lot more. Until next time, I'm Aaron Ishmael, and this has been Vintage Geek. Geek.